Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry lab video covers the synthesis of tert-butyl chloride by an SN1 reaction. This is part two, carrying out the SN1 reaction. Some safety items for today. We're going to be working with concentrated hydrochloric acid and that's extremely corrosive and it gives off very strong fumes. This is a powerful reagent and needs to be treated very carefully. You'll need to wear gloves when you're handling it and you'll also work with it in uh, a very well ventilated space. You'll want to pour hydrochloric acid in a fume hood. You'll want to not breathe the vapors and work in a well ventilated space. Tert-butyl alcohol is a flammable solvent. It's also an irritant. Wear gloves when you handle that material. The product, terpyl chloride, is a flammable volatile liquid. You'll want to work with that in adequate ventilation. After the reaction is done, we're going to wash the product with sodium bicarbonate to neutralize the HCl in the reaction. That process produces a lot of CO2 gas. The issue with that is that the separatory funnel can build up pressure if you're not careful. So you'll want to be particularly careful to vent the separatory funnel regularly to keep the pressure from building up. If you forget about this step, the top could blow off of the apparatus and liquid could splash out. Get a ring stand and a ring that's appropriately sized for your separatory funnel. Clamp the ring on the ring stand and then take your separatory funnel and make sure it fits. It should rest comfortably in the ring. You should have a stopper that goes on top of the separatory funnel. Make sure you locate that. Next we'll add the first reagent. That's tert-butyl alcohol. Here we've got a bottle of tert-butyl alcohol that's a liquid. Tert-butyl alcohol has a melting point that's very close to room temperature, and if it's a warm room, it'll be a liquid. But if you're in a cold room, it could also be a solid. Here's a bottle of tert-butyl alcohol that is crystallized because it's been in a refrigerator. If your bottle is like this, you should warm it up in a warm water bath to make it a liquid. That'll make it easier to pour and measure. Pour the tert-butyl alcohol into your graduated cylinder. We're going to use 12.0 milliliters in today's experiment. Check your separatory funnel to make sure that the stopcock is in the off position and then pour the tert-butyl alcohol into the separatory funnel. The next step is going to involve hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid is extremely corrosive and is a very powerful reagent, so you're going to need to avoid contact with that liquid and also with that vapor. It's not a good idea to try to pour from this large bottle into a graduated cylinder, so instead we're going to pour concentrated hydrochloric acid into a beaker. Then we'll pour the material from the beaker into the graduated cylinder. It's just a lot safer way to do things. Pour 25 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid into your graduated cylinder. Then pour the acid into the separatory funnel with the T-butyl alcohol. You'll notice some fuming here as the reaction takes place. Cap the separatory funnel and gently swirl it a little bit, periodically removing the top to vent pressure. Do this a few times before you invert, shake, and vent. Put the separatory funnel back in the ring and allow it to sit for a while and the phases to separate. This should take about five minutes. The phase boundary can be somewhat difficult to see, but if you look carefully, you should be able to see it as shown here. You can tell based on density which layer is the product layer. T-butyl chloride has a density that's less than water and less than hydrochloric acid. Therefore, the top layer will be the T-butyl chloride layer and the bottom layer is the aqueous layer. Drain the lower aqueous layer out of the bottom of the separatory funnel. Next, add 12 milliliters of water to the separatory funnel and shake it. This is going to wash the organic layer to try to remove some residual acid. Drain the lower aqueous layer out the bottom of the separatory funnel. Next, we'll wash the solution with aqueous sodium bicarbonate. This is a weak base that will help to neutralize acid. Use about 12 milliliters of this solution. When sodium bicarbonate reacts with acid, it produces CO2, which is a gas. So in this step, you have to be careful to avoid pressure buildup in the separatory funnel. You'll want to vent frequently to avoid pressure from building up. Again, drain the aqueous layer out of the bottom of the separatory funnel. You can see CO2 gas bubbles developing in the flask below. Next, we'll wash with 12 milliliters of saturated aqueous sodium chloride, or brine. The purpose of this step is to help clarify the organic layer. Again, drain the aqueous layer out of the bottom of the separatory funnel. 
Pour the organic layer out of the top of the separatory funnel into a clean, dry beaker. Next, add magnesium sulfate to dry the solution. You'll know you've added enough if you swirl it around and it remains free-flowing. If it's completely clumpy, you'll need to add some more. Next, decant the solution out of the beaker into a clean, dry, round bottom flask. You'll want to pour carefully to try to avoid having the drying agent slip by. At this stage, you're ready to go on to step three, distillation. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.